Katia Reka is an artist living in New Mexico who grew up in the Ukraine. Katia, you were at the protests in Santa Fe a couple of days ago. What was going through your mind? I just wanted people to look at us to see that we are part of the United States, we're Americans, and we're concerned to the point where we can't keep it quiet. We cannot cry anymore. We cannot just scroll through the news. We have to say something. And it's been the same when the first protests started happening in 2006. It's been in 2014, same way. If something's not right, you have to speak up about it. And that's a big part of what Ukrainian democracy is right now. Talk about what's happening right now. What's right now? Know? Right now, Kiev is being bombed. The streets where I grew up, walked, are being bombed. I went to bed knowing that my friends and teacher woke up from a huge blast. So the reality of it is, um, for me, I can't look away. But I know for a lot of people, it's been three weeks almost, and it's easy for it to become a second page news, to scroll through it, for it to become another ribbon mascot, regional conflict. But it is escalating. Um, my morning starts with live Ukrainian news, and that's how it ends. It's running constantly the whole day. Um, it's war. The war is happening, and that's something that I hope nobody will ever get to experience here the way we're experiencing in Ukraine. I know people talk to me and they say, I feel you. How are you doing? Are you okay? And the answers that they're hearing are not what Americans are used to hearing from most people. Um, we're not okay. We're at war. Even when we're safe here, we're at war. Our families are at war um, with Russia. And to understand the context, the pain of it is not just from the war as an act of aggression. It's the betrayal, the continuous political setups for Ukraine to be and behave as a smaller, younger brother of Russia. And then to have all the weapons taken away, all the treaties signed. And then slowly in 2014, part of it was chopped away and the world did nothing. Um, everybody looked away. And now you can't really look away. So what's happening now is full-blown war that me, my grandparents, my parents, none of us could ever imagine. We, we would say in 21st century, actual combat, face-to-face -face combat cannot happen. Imperialist land grabs cannot happen. But it's happening and, and uh, that, that's what's going on. How do you make people understand? Understand that not every political activity or even activism desire to help or solve something can be reduced to a ribbon or a mascot or meme. This is not something happening somewhere to a small group of people. We're 44 million people, 20 more million in diaspora worldwide. Um, in the first few days when this started, I was talking to my aunt. She was She's in Kanatop, the town by Sume and um, it was one of the first where the Russian flags were seen um, and it was bombed in the first couple of days. And I was talking to her, she was um, out of the cellar. We have a cellar in the house where all the potatoes and, and canned goods are stored in the, in the house for the winter. And that's where she's hiding when there's an air raid um, siren. Mm -hmm. So she would tell me that, by the way, I got out of the cellar and I watered my plants and water starts because I still have to plant the garden. So you have to understand that people are caught in the war, but they're living with a thought of victory. What are you finding your role as an artist is now? I am paper maker, book binder, textile artist. So for me, all of it is a process-based art. Um, it takes time for, for paper. I grow, collect plants for books. I plan and, and print and write for textiles. When I think about making and becoming an artist, um, I think it was my grandmother in Ukraine who died two years ago. She was 95 and um, she survived Second World War and she knew how to make everything or at least so I thought. So I learned how to grow a garden, how to knit, crochet, 
any textile. If I didn't know, she taught me that you can figure it out. And a big part of my creative practice is plants and growing. And uh, I have a big garden for New Mexico. And it's, it's a puzzle for me to figure out how to grow in the high desert. And I think I'm here for a reason to, to figure out and make it grow. Because my grandma always said that no matter where you are, you have to have a garden. This is how you put roots. That's how you figure out where you live and who you are. And she traveled a lot. Uh, she was, um, my, my grandfather was in military and um, they moved a lot. So I have the story where she told me in Poland when they lived for 10 years, she had no garden. They only had apartments for soldiers and mm -hmm. she brought soil to the roof and she grows strawberries there. So I think if she was able to do that, I can figure out way to make garden, way, ways to grow in the desert. And uh, that's my, coming point where I am sowing seeds and I'm planting starts and I think that is what I can do creatively because it is creation of of something new um, and I always think about that that's what she told me that your hands should never be idle even if if you're stressed and it does help I teach students how to tell stories and how to present them so they influence but I never really told my story because my story is always as a immigrant from Ukraine, I came here as a student, all I ever heard, Ukraine, that's Russia, right? You speak Russian. And then second is Ukraine is Chernobyl, right? So after, after a few years, you just kind of stop asking, uh, um, answering those questions and you preserve that um, integrity that Ukraine is more than being part of Soviet Union. Ukraine is more than nuclear disasters. So I know a lot of my friends, a lot of my students do not know my stories. When we're screaming, when we're on the streets, when we're posting things and, and you may think that enough, it's war, we see it, enough. Um, the news are telling us that's enough. I think this is the time to tell them. What can be done right now? Watch the news, follow what's happening. Do not do not break down because of it, because there will be end of war. We will have to rebuild. There will be efforts. I know a lot of us will be going back. Um, this is not how I wanted to introduce my daughter to the country in rubbles, but we will be going back. She's asking me, when are we going to go and plant trees and build the houses from what she's seeing? And um, don't look away because the only way to prevent it here or anywhere else because we thought that would never happen after what we've seen with Hitler we thought that would never happen we've learned our lesson but the only way to remember is to look at what's happening right now maybe you don't understand all the subtleties and nuances of why things are happening but look at what's happening to people you don't need to have degree in political science to understand pain and to, to understand the devastation happening you don't not need to understand that no matter who those people are, no matter what their skin color, origin, religion, that should not be happening to people. The reason you need to pay attention and study history is this is possible is if we think that we can create the other and then punish the other for, for otherness. And for Americans, I think this is crucial. I've been here for 22 years in America and um, the things I'm seeing the last six years we're here beyond flirting with homegrown fascism. We're beyond, beyond the flirting stage. What is happening now um, in the States, this was happening in Russia 15, 10 years ago. And uh, first you can't say it, then you can't be it, then it's illegal and you're killed for being something that you're not supposed to be. So I am just begging people to not watch opinion shows, look at the facts and just use your own reasoning to see. If we don't remember this, this will happen again. We will be silent for too long. We will think nobody will take our rights. We are, we are the greatest country. And this is how it all gets started. Germany, Russia, any dictatorship starts this way where you just let it slide. You don't stand up for somebody and then it's you next time. Um, that can pertain to race, that can pertain to Native American issues, it can pertain to trans and gay rights. 
all of it is terrifying for me because all of it is happening, was happening in Russia and people were just silent and they're still silent. Finding the other and vilifying them. This is the evolution of evil and if we've seen it several times already in the world, we should learn when to stop it. How do we prevent this from happening again? If we find common points, if we learn languages when we go somewhere, we learn how to say hello and goodbye and we find out what the this place favorite food is and what the person's favorite, favorite color is, when we know enough about each other and we see the humanity, we will not be able to point and shoot at somebody or take their rights away or tell them they're not human because we decided so. And that's what's happening with the Russian army right now. Um, the world was shocked at how Ukrainians fight. The thought, they thought we were in some kind of combat preparation our whole life. But the difference between Ukraine and Russia is we had independence for over 30 years. 31 years, we were free people. We had our problems. We had our protests. We had the government that needed to be ousted. We had corruption. But if we didn't like it, we would go outside, stand there, freeze to death, and overthrow. Nothing like that happened in Russia. There was no a gener not a generation that grew up free. They only had freedom in the 90s. And so you're comparing an army of free people fighting for their own land with an army of people who are protecting their master, their dictator. That's the difference. It's it's being talked widely about and, and this is the best way to understand what's happening and how to prevent it, that sense of freedom. You raise it in your children, you teach them to stand up, you teach them that they're okay, even if people say they're not okay and you love them. So as a mom, I always see, how do you create space for a loving person in this world? You just love them. By that you carve out that space in the universe for them to feel protected and not to seek power over somebody else to, to feel better about themselves. A great honor. Um, I, I'm your, so much respect for your resilience and your passion and prayers to you and your family. You. Um, we're, we're doing things we can, we're collecting. I know it's gonna be a while before humanitarian aids get there, but I know a lot of people here need to do something. So we're collecting goods to be shipped and uh, it's, it's the little things and humor too. That's how we're all staying. You cannot believe the, the explosion of humor and, <laughs> and uh, resilience. And I know it's been, it, we've learned it's been part of the war culture. And I know like the, the obscene language, I understand how it came about all those swear words, they were created in war. And it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a curve few day, few, few hours every day, you're just broken and then you pick yourself up or somebody else picks you up and, and, and you keep going and I cannot even imagine what people at home are going through that's my that's my thought if, if I'm that affected by it how it is when you're there thank you